Hey there, hi there, ho there, and welcome back to 25 Tricks of Christmas on Mike's Hard Reviews. We're on day 11, and today we're doing another kind of simple cocktail with, I promise, only one specialty ingredient this time that you might have to go out of your way to make. Today we're gonna make uh, some cranberry Kentucky mules, or in this case, spiced cranberry Kentucky mules, because we're gonna add some bitters to it. A Kentucky mule is a variation on a Moscow mule that swaps the vodka for bourbon, or really a whiskey of your choosing. And uh, in this case, we're going to introduce some spice elements from Angostura and Peychaud's bitters, and uh, some cranberry juice. As you know, this is my 50-50 pomegranate cranberry, which will be just perfect for this. Kind of a simple, just simple pour over copper mug kind of drink. So. Perfect party pleaser. Let's go ahead and get started. You'll need everything in front of you. Uh, you're gonna need two, li uh, two limes, one for juice, one for garnish. Two different kinds of bitters. I'm gonna be using Peychaud's and Angostura to get the kind of spice component that I want. Club soda, uh, a bourbon of your choice. I'm sticking with the Evan Williams bottle and bond. Your cranberry juice. And then this here is a ginger syrup. There's a couple different ways you can make um, ginger beer or Moscow mule like ginger components. One of them is to make a ginger syrup, which in this case was one part ginger juice and two parts sugar. Ginger juice can be kind of hard to find, but it does make a really, really spicy ginger syrup, so it might not be to everyone's taste, but we're gonna use it here because it'll stand up well against the rest of our components. A strong ginger beer like Cock and Bull or Fever Tree would also work just fine because you'd get the same kind of strong uh, ginger notes that will hold up to everything else in the glass. We're gonna start by shaking this one because we've got to dissolve the syrup into our components. And I'm gonna start by adding my bitters. I'm gonna do two dashes each of Peychaud's and Angostura um, to help complement and then stand out against the rest of the flavors. Four dashes of bitters in total is kind of a lot of bitters. It'll come through pretty loudly, which is kind of why I wanted to use a ginger syrup too, because it'll add a lot of sweetness and a lot of ginger flavor that can stand up to that properly. Next, we're gonna do a whole ounce of lime juice, which I think I've discussed before, uh, based on like the average size of limes I can get in my area, is about the juice of a single lime. I both halves in here. Ever told you how, um, how uh, Moscow mules and stuff like this can be kind of dangerous? Really acidic things will leach metal components out of a lot of glasses. And in the case like of Moscow meal glasses that are made out of solid copper, it will leach heavy metals if it sits in there for long enough. It's kind of the same reason why people thought tomatoes were poisonous for a super long time. Because they would serve them on like pewter plates and eat them with pewter plateware, which has lead in it. It leaches the lead out and the lead kills you. <laughs> so for like a super long time, people thought um, tomatoes were poisonous. And, I mean, they're, they're technically a nightshade, but like, even still, they, they totally- Yeah, they were just eating lead, which is like a super common thing in food history. Apparently, I think it was the Grecians, like the people from ancient Greece, would, would sweeten and flavor water with lead. I don't know where that idea comes from, but it is a scary one, <laughs> to say the least. We're gonna do uh, a full ounce of our ginger syrup. When I made this, I used a, a, a like a store-bought ginger juice that was actually meant to be like a health, <laughs> like a health regiment bonus. Apparently doing shots of ginger juice is like a thing. I didn't know that. What that meant is that it, it made a really, really strong ginger syrup. And I'll try to put a link to it in the description because I don't know anywhere else you can get easily available ginger juice. Next, we're gonna do three ounces, three whole ounces of our cranberry juice. And then we're gonna finish that off with two ounces of bourbon. We're gonna throw some ice into this and give it a shake to dissolve that syrup and get the citrus juice moving. And then we'll serve this up. We're doing one cube cracked and then one cube whole, like always. Just toss that in there. And throw our cap on and give it a good shake. 12 to 15 seconds. Now, because we're gonna be serving this over a lot of ice, how you should serve a Moscow Mule, uh, we're not gonna worry about double straining it, but before we do pour it into the glass, we need to do a couple things. I'm gonna start by putting in some of our club soda so that there's some effervescence waiting in the glass for us, and it's not just gonna be sitting on top. And then we're gonna take more ice and put that just straight into the glass here. If you have a lot of small pebble ice, we can just throw that in here, like a nice big scoop of it. I have nothing but large cubes right now, so um, I'm just gonna break some of these up Throw them straight in. And honestly, the more ice, the better, because it'll stay nice and cool. And that's really what sets 
a mule apart from a lot of other cocktails. Now uncap this and just pour that straight in. Top that off with a little bit more of our club soda, just to keep that fizziness going. And then we're gonna take that second lime I mentioned, and we're just gonna cut a nice wedge out of it for our garnish. Slap that on the side of our mug here. And there you have it. A, cra a spiced cranberry Kentucky mule. Let's go ahead and give this a sip. Oh, that's good. Oh, it really just tastes like berries. Uh, what comes through most is the, is, the, is the cranberry. Because we're not using a ginger beer, that sort of ginger flavor isn't like what's sitting on top and keeping the whole thing carbonated, but it comes through sort of in the background um, along with some of those bitters that we threw in there. And even though we put a lot of bitters in here, it doesn't really read as bitter. You, get, you do get like a bitter note in there, but mostly you're getting really just the, really the cranberry is the primary thing. The whiskey kind of disappears into it a little bit. Not entirely though. If you look for it, you can still find it. I feel like if you were to make this with a rye whiskey maybe, it might stand up a little bit better and give it a more robust flavor. You wanna try some? Yeah, sure. What are you thinking? It's very refreshing. Yeah, I know. It's like a really bright kind of light drink. Yeah, like it. yeah, it'd be good in the spring too, right? Like yes. now that you see this refreshing, I'm like, oh yeah, that'd make a good spring drink. Just I would say spring or summer. Yeah, for sure. I was worried about the um, uh, four dashes of bitters and the ginger because I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know how that's gonna. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was gonna be a little overpowering, but it, that's very refreshing. Yeah, it all kind of balances out when you when you use like just regular club soda, it kind of diffuses those flavors yeah. and then just adds raw carbonation, so it's a lot more like accessible, I would say. Because I think I, I know a couple people who are like, ginger beer is a no-go, it's too spicy. Yeah, I like this, uh, using um, ginger flavoring and club soda as opposed to using ginger beer. Mm -hmm. um, I like it, it's good. Yeah, it keeps it crisp. Yes. It's just it's just like, hmm, okay, yeah, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. it, it pilots the flavors rather than being one of them. I feel like if you were to make this with a ginger ale too, like pour like Verner's over it instead of club soda, that'd be a good way to kind of enhance that. It would taste more like ginger then and you'd still get the heat from the syrup, but uh, it wouldn't be as heavy as a, as a ginger beer. That'd be good. Yeah, like a, like a, yeah, like a, just make it a, a buck, which has, which is like the, the Moscow mule, but with ginger ale instead. That'd be a good way to do it too. Let me steal that back from you. Sorry. <laughs> I can make them if you want. Okay. <laughs> Alright, nice and easy today. That was day 11 of 25 drinks of Christmas. We're keeping up so far with uh, our variations and whatnot. I got more stuff coming. Man, that's good. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I, actually, once it sits in there for a little bit, it gets a little bit better. It's like fresh out of the shaker, it's so cold, it kind of freezes up your tongue. But I would drink many of those. Same. I would get wasted on these, 100%. <laughs> these are so good. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. Tune in tomorrow around the same time for yet another episode of 25 Drinks of Christmas. We've got, after this, 14 days left to go. And I've got, I've got ideas. I, I just hope they're good ones. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys around. Goodbye.